Hello there. Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. So, yes, this is going to be a funny, silly little video, uh, as evidenced by the uh, the great uh, Obi-Wan impersonation you saw in my cold open. And as far as I'm concerned, this was just an excuse. Well, part of this was just an excuse to uh, work my, uh, my Sir Alec Guinness impersonation, as wonderful as it might be. Hello there. Anyway, uh, and I'm glad I thought of this video idea uh, before May 4th came and went. Uh, as, as you guys all know, May, th May 4th is Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you, of course. Uh, but I decided to, uh, just a few weeks ago, I just kind of thought of this idea at random one day. What about May the 4s be with you? Not the force, as in, but the 4s, as in the number 4, basically, is, is what is center, it is at the very core of this idea. And it's not about uh, albums called for, although there are plenty of those to choose from, as you can see, whether it's uh, the title of them is uh, done in uh, Arabic style numerals like uh, Foreigner 4, or whether they do it in fancy Roman numerals like Toto 4, uh, or if they just spell out the word for, like they did with uh, One Direction's album and uh, Blues Traveler's album. Those were both called for. And then there, of course, are the people who decide to be a little clever and make it a play on words, a pun on the word for, as Huey Lewis and the News did with their fourth album. Uh, but yes, as, as much as I could do a video, and I guess in a way I just did, on albums called for, no, this is a bit of a different concept. This is um, titles in my CD collection, my CD library, that consist of four discs. Basic concept, sim uh, simple concept, but I have quite a few of them, and I thought I would uh, just show them to you at random. Well, not at random, but you know, you know what I mean. My words are just, you know, word salad is coming out of my mouth right now, but anyway. We must be cautious. This place can be a little rough. Uh, see, I have, I was kind of hoping that I had have, that I would have 16 of those titles to show you. You know, four times four, which would be a really interesting coincidence. But it turns out I have like 18 or 19, so that that little uh, arithmetic thing went all to heck. But anyway, uh, I've got four disc collections in various different styles of packaging. Um, the one the one and only example I have of a hardbound canvas style book um, box set is Crossroads, Crossroads by Eric Clapton. It is uh, a four disc set, as you can see. And uh, this one was actually in my sister's and brother-in-law's collection. Uh, my sister was a big Eric Clapton fan. And uh, I'm kind of eh on Clapton, especially uh, with the things he's said and done in recent years. Uh, but you can't deny that he's a great musician. And of course, the fact that this, since this was from my sister's collection, uh, I had to keep it. Um, it's got, it's uh, seen better days. You know, it's got some discoloration on here and uh, it looks like an old price sticker was on there and stuff. But uh, the discs are in excellent shape, so... Uh, it, it is it is a keeper for a few reasons. Now, uh, five of these sets, I actually found um, they may at one time have been in an actual box set with like a, a book, uh, and I actually do have box sets. I'll show you in a few minutes, but I wanted to do these kind of uh, group these in the style of packaging. Uh, but a few of these I found in the bargain section for, and the CDs were two bucks a piece. The CDs, CDs were just uh, loose, you know, individually in jewel cases. So uh, I don't have the book or the box that they may or may not have come in. Maybe at some point, if I do see the sets in their original box form with the book, I'll go ahead and buy them. But for now, I'm happy to have the CDs at a pretty good discount. You know, how can you complain at buying a four disc box set for $8? And these first three examples actually came from the bargain ba uh, the bargain section at Skips uh, before it closed. So I clarify that. Uh, but anyway, this first one is Miles Davis, and this is uh, the Columbia Years 1955 to 1985 is the name of this set. And you've got disc one is Blues and Standards, disc two is Standards and Originals, 
Disc three is originals and moods. Kind of interesting that the the categories kind of straddled the different discs. They weren't uh, dis, you know neatly broken up disc by disc. And disc four is electric. So that's where uh, you know he was joined by an electric um, backing band. So yes, uh, a lot of uh, his great Columbia tracks are on here. Summertime, and uh, someday my prince will come. I assume that's a take on the Disney song. And then uh, I'm sure you've got, uh, yeah, Bye Bye Blackbird is in here. My Funny Valentine is a great song. And yeah, just just about everything. And the, the uh, number of tracks on these discs is a little bit smaller than usual. Uh, ten tracks on disc one and only eight tracks, oh, uh, fewer than ten tracks on the other three discs uh, each. So, uh, so yeah, a, by number of tracks, a fairly smallish box set, but... Miles Davis tends to improv, and they go on. They can go on for ten minutes per song sometimes. So, yeah, if you're looking for a primer on Miles Davis, I can't think of a much uh, worse way to do it than uh, a four disc set for eight bucks. Throat's a little dry. <clears throat> now these next two, uh, I I would have thought they were done in the same year, but they were actually a couple of years apart. Uh, but similar artists. And yeah, it's kind of hard to tell them apart when they're beside each other because the uh, uh, the font is the same on the spines of both sets. But uh, yes, as I said, two similar artists. But uh, yes, and I found both of these, like the Miles Davis, I found both of these on Skip's bargain, bargain table. Uh, first one is Johnny Mathis, and this is a personal collection, a four-disc set of his Columbia years. And the tracks go, I think, pretty much in chronological order, as suggested by the cover uh, portraits of Johnny. He's got him, you know, uh, young. Actually, th this one, he looks older than on this one. So maybe they're not in chronological order because the cover art doesn't seem to be either. And that's Johnny in uh, as he looked in the 80s. <laughs> Gotta love the perms, right? And or maybe that was 70s. Yeah. Um, uh, Mike Brady hair. And then uh, as he was in the, in the 80s. So yes, pretty much every Johnny Mathis song that you would really want, that you would care to have, um, is on this set. Chances Are is one of his biggest hits. I love that one. Misty, of course, is one of his all-time classics. And uh, yeah, all the way up through his uh, late 80s, early 90s output. So yeah. Again, you know, I cannot complain about having a nice, meaty, collection of Johnny Mathis, uh, or the same with Tony Bennett. Yes, this is 40 Years, The Artistry of Tony Bennett, and this was put out in uh, 1993? No, 1991. The Johnny Mathis set, I think, was put out in uh, 93, yeah. But yeah, again, kind of like as with the Johnny Mathis set, uh, just about every uh, Tony Bennett song that you would need to have is on here. Uh, and these actually, this set actually predates uh, all of the duets albums that he's done, which most of which I have, you know, the uh, the Lady Gaga duets, uh, Diana Krall, uh, what was it, um, Katie Lang. I think this uh, this predates the Katie Lang set, I believe. And there was another one. I can't remember. Uh, he, I think he did a duets with another artist alongside the uh, the various artists duets CDs that he's done. But uh, yeah. I have plenty of Johnny uh, Tony Bennett in my collection, and uh, yeah, he's just a great singer. Yeah, Johnny Mathis and Tony Bennett, two two of my favorite uh, old style uh, pop jazz easy listening crooners of all time. And here's another one. Uh, this one I actually picked up just this year <clears throat> on my yeah on my most recent trip to Portland uh, back in January. And uh, again, this was in the two dollar bargain CD section. And again, uh, just the, the individual discs. And I really did not appreciate this guy's voice and the, the phrasing and the way he sings a song until I got the set. Mel Torme. And this is uh, simply called the Mel Torme Collection, 1944 to 1985. And it's a four-disc set, as the discs in the tray fall over, excuse me, uh, put out by Rhino Records. And it goes from his early stuff with the Meltones all the way up through some uh, tracks that he sang uh, as duets with Barry Manilow. And even the uh, R&B pop group Was Not Was, he, he features in a Was Not Was track that's included on here. So, 
the guy um, was versatile, I guess you'd say. Uh, but yeah, good old Mel Torme, uh, he he just does. You've got to you've got to listen to him to appreciate him. Uh, he he's kind of one of the under one of the underdogs in terms of you know the old classic pop jazz crooners. Uh, as I said, you know I, I didn't really appreciate his voice and what it could do until I listened to these. He he could even uh, outpace or or uh, outrun Tony Bennett as one of my favorites uh, in the rankings. So yeah, a great set, and that was one of my best uh, eight dollar one of the best eight dollars i spent in quite a while actually the falls can have a strong influence on the weak-minded and this next set i just got uh, about a few weeks ago less than a month ago i think and this one was over at epic seconds and a little more expensive i think these were four bucks a piece uh, but yes rick nelson or uh, as he was known in his early days ricky nelson a teen idol turned a uh, pretty respectable adult Pop, uh, pop and country singer-songwriter. So yes, this traces him all the way th through his entire professional career. Uh, Rick Nelson Legacy is the name of this set uh, from when he started back in the 50s, 1957, uh, going through the 60s when he began to mature and uh, come into his own as a singer-songwriter all the way up through 1985, when sadly he passed away in, I believe it was a, a plane crash, uh, yes, his, his life was cut short, and he did some. Uh, he made some great, great songs. Uh, he was one of the he was one of the pioneers of rock and roll. He came along very shortly after Elvis Presley, and unfortunately, his real uh, time in the spotlight in that era of his, of his career was kind of short lived, because very soon after that, the Beatles would come along, and you know, uh, the British invasion invasion would kind of uh, push. The, you know, the, the old rockabilly-style rock and roll uh, down a couple pegs, and uh, Rick had to take a break, reinvent himself, and uh, he did a pretty good job of it, I have to say. So, yeah. An another guy that I under underestimated the talent of, not quite as much as Mel Torme, but still, this is a nice set to have. Very, very cool set to have. And, uh, yeah, those are the ones that I bought that were individually cased, and uh, I've got a few that were in... Um, Actually, I think I'll do the box sets. Well, I'm going to be a little bit out of order on this just because of the way I'm structuring the narrative of this set. So I'll go ahead and show you the actual box sets, or some of them anyway, that I have. And actually, for now, I'll just be showing you two that I have. This one I just picked up recently. Uh, it I spent a little bit of money on it because it's a little rare. Uh, Linda Ronstadt. And yes, she's one of those artists that... I, I'm not a huge, huge fan of her, but she's kind of snuck up on me, and it's like before I knew it, I've I've got like four or five of her albums. Uh, her um, greatest hits, the it's like the the, the double length, uh, very best of I think it was called, was in my sister's collection, so that got me started. And uh, yeah, she's just she was just a great no, she is she's still around, except she is retired from singing. Uh, a great singer, songwriter, and again, kind of versatile, kind of like Rick Nelson. She's dabbled in country, she's dabbled in pop, she's dabbled in rock. And yes, this is a four-disc set of, and it's got a lot of stuff um, licensed from other labels, uh, like soundtrack songs and duets that she did with other artists. Uh, it's got, of course, a sampling of uh, her trio work with Dolly Parton and uh, Amy Lou Harris. So yes, a very well-rounded collection. I was very, very happy to pick this up. In my opinion, it was worth the $45 that I paid for it. And this uh, this other one, one of the other box sets that I have, is a little dusty. <laughs> I'm brushing this off. And this, in a way, this is as much a various artists compilation as it is a single artist box set. Quincy Jones. This is Q, the musical biography of Quincy Jones. And yes, this is... As the title suggests, this has pretty much everything that Quincy Jones put his hands on, including, of course, uh, the famous uh, trilogy of Michael Jackson albums from the 80s, the late 70s, early 80s, that he produced. Uh, and yeah, just... Uh, well, I, I, I could spend an hour naming all the stuff that's on here, but... Uh, yes, George Benson, he produced some of George Benson's work. And uh, so I'm having trouble reading some of this. Oh, Paul Simon... Uh, Rufus and Chaka Khan, uh, Leslie Gore. 
He even produced some Leslie Gore stuff, which I'd, I'd forgotten about until I was reading this just now. But, uh, yeah. And it's kind of separated in uh, in two categories. Disc one is Jumping in the Woodshed, which I guess is early work, obviously. Disc two is Gone Hollywood. And this uh, includes some, some soundtrack stuff. Uh, actually, mostly soundtrack stuff on the second disc. Uh, disc three is Hitman, which uh, produces his production work, making uh, hit tracks for other artists. And disc four, The Dude Throws Down. So, yes. And this one was still sealed. at. I remember it was at House of Records, still sealed, and I think I paid $20 for it. But, uh, yeah. I haven't listened to this in quite a while. I bought it like three years ago, and it's been a while since I've listened to it. But, yes, a fantastic set there. Um, the, the other box set I have... <clears throat> is going to flow, uh, I'm going to flow into it by way of some other stuff I'm going to show you first. But yes, I got a lot of uh, four disc sets that are in the uh, chubby CD cases like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And two of them are various artist pop collections. Uh, I did a video about this because I owned volume two, or I have owned volume two for like 20 some years, and I kind of had my eyes open. Uh, on and off for Volume 1, and I found it two years ago, I think. I uh, found it from an, a seller in, I think it was in Ukraine, and uh, bought it online, and it, it took like a month to get to me, and I was so happy when it did. But yes, uh, back to the 80s, this is called. This is uh, extended version remixes of hits from the 1980s. Uh, four discs, just all sorts of stuff. And these two, both of these sets were from the Netherlands, uh, you know, issued, uh, produced, and marketed in the Netherlands. And don't know how a guy in Ukraine uh, happened upon it to sell on eBay or on uh, Discogs, but anyway. So yes, a bunch of great hits on here. And that was Volume 1. This is Volume 2. This is the one that I've had for years. I think I bought this one at Skips. And uh, again, a bunch of uh, classic pop songs in their extended, uh, what, what would be 12-inch record remixes. Uh, but yeah... Oh, you got Queen, Meatloaf, Prince, New Order, Paul Young, Sinead O'Connor, Bronsky Beat, Vangelis, Duran Duran, Cyndi Lauper, uh, Kate Bush, ABC, The Moody Blues, Howard Jones, Spandau Ballet. So, yes, a fantastic uh, pair of CD sets. I absolutely love them. And it was a, indeed a momentous day when I finally got my hands on Volume 2. It's fantastic. And uh, now we're moving into soundtracks. You've taken your first step into a larger world. I got, got quite a few, uh, thanks to a uh, an independent label called La La Land Records. Uh, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But uh, the, the only non-sci-fi four-disc set that I have is Titanic. And this was one that was put out in uh, 2012, the album, the, uh, the movie's 15th anniversary. One of the discs is loose in there. Uh, but yes, um, this is a reissue of the two standalone soundtrack albums, uh, Titanic and Back to Titanic. Disc three, disc three is the um, music performed by, and I'm probably going to mess this, up, this name up, I Salonisti, or E Salonisti, which was the, um, they did the music that the uh, Titanic string quartet played on screen. So, and that, that's, you know, a disc of their music. And disc four is popular music from the Titanic era. So, yes, an interesting set. And I'm going to... Yeah, there's the disc that is loose. There we go. But yes, I love the uh, James Horner's music from Titanic. It's one of my favorite soundtracks of his. So, yeah, when, this, uh, when I saw this set, and I think I, think I bought it at uh, Music Millennium up in Portland... Uh, decided I had to pick it up. So yeah, it's a great, great set, kind of an extended set of Titanic music. But uh, yes, I mentioned sci-fi a minute ago. Excuse me. So yes, how can I have a video called May the Fours Be With You without mentioning, of course, Star Trek? No! What? No, the other, one, the other star will be coming along in just a minute. But yes, La La Land Records is a... Uh, Reissue label, a private, uh, an independent reissue label that does uh, re-releases of classic soundtracks, expanded re-releases, and 
they've done a bunch of sets for the Star Trek TV series. I have two sets from Deep Space Nine, four discs each uh, from, yeah, they include music from what probably turned out, turns out to be dozens of episodes for each disc, uh, for each set, excuse me. Yes, not the entire scores from each episode, just little bits and pieces from each one. And uh, they also did some sets from Star Trek Voyager. So yes, a bunch of fantastic stuff. Uh, I love the music from Star Trek, as you can tell. And they also did a couple of sets with um, music spanning the entire Star Trek universe. Uh, here's we have here we have the 50th anniversary collection, uh, musical rarities from across the Star Trek universe, and on it was on this set that premiered the score from the animated Star Trek series. So yes. Uh, Th that was one show that, kind of like a lot of cartoon shows, they just recycled the same musical cues throughout all of the episodes. So essentially, the entire series, and it was only one season, the entire series' of score is on one disc on this set. But yes, it also includes uh, stuff from the other Star Trek series, uh, original series, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. And uh, the same is the, is the case with... Uh, the Star Trek collection, The Final Frontier, which was La La Land's last official Star Trek release. Sorry to see their relationship with Star Trek come to an end, because they have been putting out some great, great releases. I would love to have seen more. Uh, but yes, this was a great way to end it. And yes, like oh, as with similar to the 50, 50th anniversary set, uh, this was uh, they devoted a disc, uh, approximately one disc each, to each of the TV series. Uh, Next, yeah, Next Generation Deep Space Nine Voyager, uh, and Enterprise. I was never a huge fan of Enterprise or its music, so that I could take it or leave it, but uh, yeah. yes, uh, La La Land has put out so much Star Trek music over the last uh, 12, 11 or 12 years was their, um, their association with uh, the Star Trek license. So yes, that's uh, a lot of four-disc sets here, but I've saved the best for last. <clears throat> and this is the other actual box set that I have. And yes, uh, keeping in the theme with uh, the title of this video, May the Force Be With You, we have the Star Wars Trilogy, uh, the original soundtrack anthology. Now, this came out in 1993. Yeah, the same year as the uh, uh, Johnny Mathis set. But yes, this was... Uh, this would mark... Um, well, I could probably do an, a separate video on the Star Wars music. I've got several uh, different uh, permutations of the Star Wars scores. But uh, to keep this short and sweet, this was the last time that the uh, soundtracks from the original Star Wars trilogy would appear in mostly in their uh, album formats. You know, a, a lot of stuff, especially like the Star Trek soundtracks, nowadays the uh, releases that have been coming out for the last 10 or 15 years have been the music as heard in the movie. Well, on this set, they decided to keep the, uh, you know, the, the album range arrangements, which is kind of like the symphonic arrangements or whatever. And also, this was the last soundtrack appearance of the songs from the original version of Return of the Jedi. Yes, uh, you may or may not know that for the um, special edition Star Wars trilogy, they replaced the songs in Return of the Jedi, which, uh, you know, much to my chagrin, I, I'm kind of a Star Wars, uh, old school Star Wars purist, so I, I have my uh, I have my bones to pick with the remastered uh, original trilogy, but that's a whole other subject. But yes, this set included. This was also the first time that uh, the original trilogy soundtracks were put out beyond their original uh, release lengths. So there's a lot of probably half, maybe even two thirds of the music in this set had never been released before in any format. So, uh, yes, this has been... I lived in Nevada when uh, when this came out, so we probably bought it at a record store in Las Vegas, I would imagine. But, yes, f had to buy it as soon as I heard about it. I was a huge, huge fan of Star Wars for my whole life, and, uh, and of course, the music as well. So, yes, this has been a treasured part of my collection for all those years, and will continue, be, continue to be until I'm, until I'm a Force ghost. <laughs> anyway, Yes, uh, suffice it to say, this is one of my favorite uh, releases of all time. The Star Wars Trilogy, the original soundtrack anthology. Fantastic set of music there. And so, yes, I guess that's it. I had a lot more four-disc CD sets than I, than I originally thought I did when I was thinking about this video. 
I am amazed how strongly the force is with me. Uh, and I had another one that uh, I, th I uh, ditched at the last minute just because I wanted to keep it with um, sets that where all the discs were released at the same time. That was the one thing that I uh, ditched that one for. I'll mention that one at some point later on, I'm sure, when I do the comedy section of my uh, my Hold On CD collection. Anyway, uh, but yes, I hope you had as much fun watching this video as I did making it. It was a lot of fun, and it was a lot of fun uh, exercising my uh, Sir Alec Guinness Obi-Wan impersonation, for better or for worse. But anyway, that'll do it for this video for May the Fours Be With You. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if so, hit that like button and share it with your friends, and give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for, watch for watching, I'll see you next time, and remember, the falls will be with you. Always. Cool